Ladies and gentlemen, your attention please. CNN Business Traveler is back. Welcome to CNN Business Traveller. I'm Richard Quest, this month reporting from Singapore. That's right, we're back to celebrate business travel. Goodbye, Mr. Quest. Goodbye in a new era. In this series of CNN Business Traveller, we'll be examining every loved and loathed part of our working life on the road. Hello, how are you? Good, how are you? We'll be reporting on security, testing efficiency, reviewing the lounges and the hotels. We'll be testing the latest technology, updating you on new routes, tasting the food, and sourcing the best luggage. And where better to kick things off than where it all began? Ten years ago. Hello and welcome to CNN Business Traveller. I'm Richard Quest in Singapore. Connecting at a hub that links the planet. Coming up, Singapore Airlines Chief Executive talks exclusively to Business Traveller. The rise of low-cost carriers in Asia. The newcomers, the old hands, and a budget airlines feeding frenzy. All premium long-haul strikes again. Can Hong Kong Airlines make it work? We're on the maiden flight. And we dine in style with the investor Jim Rogers, who's made Singapore his home. First, the apple of Singapore's eye, Changi Airport. The tropical fish, the orchids, the environment, these were the facilities that helped Changi set the standards for airports around the world. Unfortunately, where Changi led, others have quickly followed. And today, Changi finds itself in the uncomfortable position of sometimes no longer being number one. Let's just down this way. Okay. Yep. So all the way straight to the end and make a left turn. This is a customer experience agent. One of a number of new ideas, part of Changi's push to reclaim the crown as the world's best airport. In its 30-year history, Changi has won more awards than anyone else. In recent years, it's been rudely shocked by coming second behind Hong Kong and Seoul. We came up with three tenets or pillars of uh, service, one of which is to try to provide stress-free service, as stress-free as possible. And then we like to have a personalized service as much as we can. Just walk all the way straight down. And lastly, we like to provide a positively surprising moments as they come through our airport. Putting stress-free, personalized and positively surprising into practice meant providing something other airports didn't or doing it better. Whether it's a cinema to while away long layovers or free treatments to soothe those weary limbs. This is more fun than should be allowed in Singapore. They introduced the unusual to keep the young entertained and those just young at heart out of trouble. Hey! The latest addition is the customer experience agent. Enjoy Changi, sir. We're trying to help passengers who may not be frequent traveller, uh, seasoned travellers, to navigate uh, our airport. I can't see no. any of them. OK. Well, that means they're busy uh, <laughs> helping some passengers uh, somewhere else in the terminal. Well, you see them with the, in, over there, Richard. Hello. What have you got in this thing? Um, basically... Everywhere from information booths to the toilets. The airport is screaming, we're listening. No, we were, it's part of our engagement, trying to listen to you. What All right, before? foul smell yes. and wet floor. Wet floor. And of course, none of this matters if the transfer hub of the future has shifted westwards to the Gulf. 
Yes, it's true that Middle East is now a convenient stopover, uh, but this doesn't change the picture that over in Asia, in the Asia Pacific, we continue to serve a still growing population, still growing a network of flights. Changi is only half the story. Its dominant carrier, Singapore Airlines, is the other half. This darling of aviation, the launch customer of the A380, also now finds itself battling for top place. Singapore Airlines' reputation for quality is epitomised by the luxury first-class suites here on the A380 Super Jumbo and, of course, by the signature Singapore Girls. Thank you very much, the flight attendants. These days, the airline is beset by higher fuel prices, competitive threats from Gulf carriers and weak demand in key markets. It means the new chief executive has some serious decisions to take. Go Chung Pong has been in the job just a year and recently had to announce disappointing results down by 53 percent. Competition is, is nothing new to us. We have always been facing competition. We don't have a domestic market. Everything we do is international. So, uh, but the way we operate at a fundamental level uh, hasn't changed. Do you see the threat from the other airlines and the other carriers as having changed? And obviously here, we can't dance around too long before we have to say the Gulf carriers. The establishment of hubs in other places in the world is something that we, we are well aware of and we are, uh, it's, it's part, in fact, it's always part of our scenario planning. And for us, our market remain very uh, focused on Asia, where we see, we continue to see uh, great strength in our network. So you're not complacent about the threat, but you're not having sleepless nights about it either? No, the threat is always there for Singapore Airlines. It's not this hub, is another hub in Asia. We recognise that the world is changing. The traffic flows are different. The, the day when crude oil prices are low could be days of the past. We just have to make sure that we can compete effectively and function effectively as a profitable enterprise going forward. We are really working on what the next generation will look at. What is our next great leap in terms of service standard, in terms of product offering, in terms of what network we could offer to our customers. So we'll announce them as we... Uh, as, we, oh. as, we, as oh. we get those done. <laughs> I thought you were going to announce them now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Coming up after the break, the low-cost airlines in Asia. The battle heats up.